Hello everybody, it's Sharon here. I blog over at iRestore Stuff, um, but today we're here and in the Paint It Beautiful group. Hopefully you can all hear me well enough. Um, Jenny Lynn is, usually does a Q&A. She's not able to be joining me today, but she said, Sharon, just go for it. So here I am going for it. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about Ultra Grip today. I've brought my little list so I can make sure I've got everything. But before I do that, while we're just waiting for some people to jump onto the live, I'm going to share this on my own page. So let me just check it here, that it, make sure it's all live. So what, while I'm doing this, why don't you, if you know someone who wants to learn about Fusion Mineral Paint, um, learn about Ultra Grip, then just go ahead and share the live. So just hit the little share button. Let me just find my page. I restore stuff, so if you wanted to um, jump over to your page or your group, are you showing them exactly how I do this? I'm just going to post. There we go. And I'm going to share it to my group. So while you're here, let me know where you're tuning in from. Are you from Canada? Are you from the USA? I'm from Australia. So if there's any Australians out there today, um, let me know where you're from. Love to hear from you. So just going to chat, change this to my group sharing the live in there. <clears throat> We've got a few people joining in now. So that's great. I can do without my phone now. I'll just pop it aside. All right, so we're gonna be working on this little piece here. As I said, if you've just tuned in, I'm Sharon and I blog over at I Restore Stuff. Um, I've got some help here today from my daughter, Amber, who's gonna be watching your comments. If you've got questions while we're doing the live, please let me know. But I heard that we are celebrating here on Paint it, in Paint It Beautiful group, over 30,000 group members. That is awesome. So I heard also, and you may have seen a post yesterday, that tomorrow there's gonna to be a huge giveaway, like one of the biggest giveaways that Paint It Beautiful has ever done. And Jenny Lynn is gonna be posting about that tomorrow. So let me just say that you will want to be starting to paint something beautiful in Fusion Mineral Paint to get ready to enter the giveaway. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in a post. I'm sure they'll pin it to the top of the page tomorrow. So let's talk about prep, prepping your piece. Now, Fusion has already given us this beautiful prep guide that you will find, and Amber's just gonna look for that prep guide and put that link. You can actually find and download your own prep guide to give you a bit of an idea when we use Ultra Grip. Now, Maybe you haven't heard of Ultra Grip before. Maybe you use it all the time. But I'm here to let you know you don't have to use it on every piece. It's not something that you really, because blah, 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 Fusion is really, like the name suggests, fuses to your pieces really well without the use of Ultra Grip on most cases. But as you see our card shows us that we have something that's laminate or glass or metal or plastic, we can use Ultra Grip to help it adhere to the surface. Now, there's a couple of other times that I might use Ultra Grip, and one of them is uh, for a piece like this that is actually quite a shiny, shiny surface. I've just started sanding a little bit here just to get degloss it, I guess you would say. But here you can see it's quite shiny. Um, the other example I was gonna show you is this piece of furniture that's actually laminate on top. Now you can see that's quite grungy on the top there. I've just literally grabbed this out. It was gonna be in our throwaway pile. Um, but to clean that up, it's got sticky tape marks here, all sorts of things. So to clean that up and to clean any of your pieces, what I would do first and what our prep guide suggests is using TSP. Fusion's TSP <coughs> comes in this little bottle. It's phosphate free organic degreaser. You only need, and I've got about 500 mils in here, you need about two capfuls per litre. So all I'm gonna do is one capful, because I've only got 500 mils of, I think, seriously, it's a guess. Swish that around. That's all you need to clean and prep your piece down. So just grab yourself a cloth. Hey, Amber, have we got some people telling us where they're coming from today, or where they're looking from? So you can see that we can just degrease yes, the lemonade. Yes, we've got Carrie from the USA, Sarah from WA, we've got people from SC, I don't know where that is. South Carolina? South Carolina. Yeah, we've got um, family Ohio in South Carolina. And Belimba. And Belimba. <coughs> so we've got people from Australia, Queensland. 
<clears throat> All right, so I'm going to do that as well. I've got TSP on this cloth. You want to get rid of any grunge, grease and grime that's going to be on your piece, first of all. You can see I'll need to dry that. But I've also removed the handles from my piece. You never know what kind of grease and grime might get underneath your handles as well on your drawers. <clears throat> um, so yeah, cleaning your piece is important before you uh, do it, the other things. I'm just going to actually dry that with a bit of a lint-free cloth. All right, if you've just tuned in, I'm Sharon. I blog at I Restore Stuff. You can find me over there. And today we're talking about Ultra Grip. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to um, put a little bit in a dish. Now, our prep card, we talked about this before, and Amber has po posted the link in the comments for you to download your own PDF version of this. Um, but it says if you're using a glass or a laminate or a metal or plastic, or in this case, very shiny, glossy surface. Um, you can use roll the Ultra Grip on with a really thin coat using a microfiber roller. So I do have a microfiber roller here that I can show you. <coughs> These are the microfiber ones. And just make sure you kind of pull off any little bits of fluff that might be on there. But today, I know this is kind of a flat surface, but I've, because I've got all these down here, I'm just going to be using a brush. And so I would use the microfiber roller if you're doing large flat surfaces and especially maybe your kitchen cabinets that you might want to use a, um, <coughs> a flat roller on. You're welcome to do that, excuse me. Um, but today I'm going to use a brush. I hid one right under here, a Stalmeister brush. Just pouring a little bit of Ultra Grip in here. <coughs> Oh, the other thing I'd like you to help me with, if you can see over here, today I'm, I want to paint this piece as well. Now, I need to let the Ultra Grip dry, but I have previously Ultra Gripped the other side around here, so I will be showing you painting it in just a minute. But I need a decision made, people. So, if you can help me decide, I'd like to go a darker colour. I've got a few colours here to choose from, so let me know in the comments what you would choose. We've got Midnight Blue, Babery, Ash, which is a gorgeous dark grey, and Seaside. So if you can let me know in the comments, what colour should I paint this piece? That would be helpful because I'm very indecisive at the best of times. So need a little help on that. What else was I going to mention? Oh, the other thing is, so because the reason I'm going with a dark colour here <clears throat> is because this is such a dark wood. It's also bordering on slightly reddish tones, mahogany tones. So let's talk a little bit, I don't know if you've got any comments there yet, but talk a little bit maybe about a piece that you might be a little bit worried that it's going to bleed through your paint. If it's a light colour, especially those that bleed through the tannins in the wood can bleed through and cause your white or light colours to look either pinkish or yellowish, depending on the, the tones, the tannins or the stain that might be on the piece coming through. So one of the only things that I have found and many of you have found that will help that and stop and block the bleed through is this Zinsa bin, primer sealer stain blocker. Make sure it does say stain blocker on it. Um, I do use the white version if I'm using a dark piece because I also feel like it, if I'm going from a dark to light, I mean, I'll use the white version. It's a shellac based uh, sealer. And that will seal any tannins. Sometimes you'll get wood knots that will bleed through. So I use the white because then I'm transitioning to that lighter colour and I actually save on some of my nice fusion paint. So I just wanted to show you this example here where I have actually used a white colour. And this was quite the same tones as this here. And very, very shiny, shiny lacquer. So just to be sure, I added a bit of Ultra Grip because, here's my other reasoning, I thought that if I sanded too much to get that grip on the surface, it may actually allow some of that stain to come through, and therefore if I go white, it's going to allow that bleed through to happen. So instead of sanding a lot to perhaps make that happen, I decided to do ultra grip instead, and then I've painted with white over the top. Now I've got about three coats of the white on there, 
And you can see clearly that it does need an extra coat. You can still see some shady shadowing in there. Uh, this is the Fusion Mineral Paint Colour Casement. So that's one of our whiter whites. Uh, so that's all I was going to tell you about that. I have done this on another project that had very similar, and you can maybe um, pop that up on the video screen. Thanks, Eric. I've got Eric helping me switch the cameras and the video. There's a dresser there that's similar to this colour. I want to show you the before of my dresser that I did with this. That's the before right there. <coughs> and then afterwards, when I've fully... I used Ultra Grip on that because it had a very, very slick surface as well. And so afterwards, I've painted that in midnight blue. So there's the difference, such a difference in that... Um, in that makeover because I went to a darker colour because it was just a lot easier. And the, the midnight and the darker colours, some of the darker colours really, just such excellent coverage that was probably two coats of the midnight blue. Probably only needed one, but I always do two just for extra. Thanks for that. And um, Amber, you've got a link for that blog post in the comments. Have you got a question there? Uh, no, but there's a lot of people saying seaside, so I think that's your winner. Seaside. Okay, people are saying seaside. Well, that's going to be our winner for today for painting. That's great. Decision made. Okay, so I've got my Ultra Grip in here. I also wanted to show you too that um, if, you're, if you're using Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint products as well, Milk Paint comes with a bonding agent, and these are actually one and the same product, but used for different purposes. So... With the milk paint, it's a powdered form and the milk paint is mixed in with the bonding agent to add extra grip to your milk paint. And the fusion, we use this as an under coating on our pieces and then paint over the top of it. So I just wanted to mention that little difference there. But if you've run out of one, you can use the other. Top tip right there. So I'm going to be using my brush today. And you can see I've kind of scratched up this surface. I'm not going to bother worrying about sanding this because we've got the ultra grip happening. So we, I just wanted to show you how really how thin you need to use it. Actually, I've looked like I've gotten on a bit too thick there. Now this will dry absolutely clear. You do have to be a bit careful and, and that's why people do use a roller is because you don't want brush strokes to be showing because it may sh show through on your painted surface. But, and I should have picked a bit, uh, bigger brush but I'll show you a little bit there and then also, so you see how thin that is? It's barely there. Uh, also I wanted to do on this bit here, this is the reason I've got the brush is because we've got all these nooks and crannies. Do we have any questions there yet, Amber? <clears throat> where are you tuning in from? Love to hear where you're coming, listening from. And if you would like to sh know someone who would like to hear or watch this live, please share it with them by just hitting the little share button. And I'm sure uh, some of the admins and moderators of Paint It Beautiful group are gonna share this to the Fusion Mineral Paint page as well. There we go. So we're just getting that ultra grip in all of the little crevices. Now I do remember years ago before I knew about ultra grip painting a piece of furniture that had all these little crevices in it and I had I was able to sand everything else but when it's such fine detail like that it's really hard to get in and so the um, paint I wasn't using fusion but uh, I think it might have yeah don't know, remember what I was using but the paint actually chipped within inside of those little areas because you can't get in there to sand them so there you go. Any questions about using Ultra Grip? So when to use it? Mainly on really highly glossy surfaces. So I could have just risked it with this one and painted straight on it. Fusion is pretty durable. I mean, you know, grippable as the name suggests. It's Fusion, fuses to the surface. I could have risked it and just done that. But sometimes you get to know your pieces that you're working with. This is actually one of those, uh, I want to say, <clears throat> Balinese type of pieces of furniture. You can kind of tell by the make of it, um, by the way the drawers are made, things like that. So I've taken the handles off this one, so I wonder what kind of handles I should 
put on this. If you saw that blue dresser before, I actually used some faux leather handles that actually made that look quite stunning. So another decision I'll have to make. So what are we doing? Seaside on this, beautiful blue. You can do all sorts of uh, wonderful things with our metallics, fusion metallics and our glazes. You can use clear glaze with any fusion color. You can use clear glaze with any of the metallics. And imagine some of that clear glaze going into all these crevices here. Give you a beautiful, beautiful finish. So Tina has asked, what material other than shiny wood can you use Ultragip on? Um, other than shiny wood, so we've got glass or laminate, uh, which I showed you down here with this surface here. That's a laminate surface. So if I ultra grip on that, the fusion will be able to stick even better. Now, fun fact for you is that the, this is 100% acrylic resin. I believe I'm right. Laurie's going to correct me if I'm wrong. But this is actually what the base, the base for what our paints are made with. So obviously when you add the pigments and the things in there, it lessens the 100% um, grippiness. Is that a word? I've just invented it. A new word, if that is not a word. <laughs> but so the, using the Ultra Grip just gives that added extra security, especially if you're doing work for customers. Um, give me a wave if you're a professional furniture painter and you actually do this as a business and you sell your pieces. Give us a little wave because that's when you want to have that um, assuredness and security that your piece is going to be <coughs> absolutely in perfect, like it's not going to come apart a month after they've um, used it. So, And it is a water-based product, so you can even use this with other water-based paints, dare I say. I think you should be able to. All right, so... That's a little bit about Ultra Grip. I'm just going to leave that for now and let's get painting on this seaside because I want you to see the beautiful coverage that we have with Fusion. Oh, I didn't talk about or mention too that <coughs> if you're painting Fusion on raw wood, raw, just my raw wood example here, <laughs> if you're using Fusion on raw wood, it just soaks straight into the timber. There's no way that you need any Ultra Grip or anything else for things like that. And like I said, please, you don't have to use Ultra Grip on every piece of furniture that you're going to be painting. Um, <clears throat> only on those super slick surfaces. And examples were laminate, glass, metal, plastic. So you can paint on those things by you just adding that Ultra Grip as a layer underneath. You can see that that's drying super quickly. I painted this area first, moving that way. And so it's drying already. So Mia's wanting to know how long you should wait before going over Ultra Grip. Okay, very good question. So it says on the bottle, and I'll refer to it, but I think it was 12 hours. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes, apply one coat for best results. Let dry for 12 hours before your sub subsequent coats of fusion. And it's just, you know, clean up with water. Uh, but 12 hours is the best. I don't always wait that long. Just my... Just, but do as I say, not as I do, right? Um, but it depends on your day. You know, if it's a really super drying day today, it's quite overcast and we've had a bit of rain, so I would be letting it dry the full 12 hours. But, and sometimes too, if it's just for you, then you probably are a little bit more flexible with how fussy you are. But if you're doing pieces to sell and you want that extra security, wait that full 12 hours. And another thing can be said too about curing time. Um, I'll just mention that as well. So all paints, waxes, finishes need about 20 to 30 days to cure. That means to really, really harden. So you don't want to be putting anything heavy on top of your piece. If you're, um, yeah, if you put anything heavy on top and it hasn't hardened sufficiently, then you're going to get marks, dings, and even paint peeling back off if you go to lift your thing off it. So I'm just going to pour a little bit into another dish. I've shaken up my jar to just make sure all the pigments are well, what do you call it, distributed, finding the right words. 
And this, you can actually feel the difference. When I've got Ultra Grip on there, it definitely feels different than the slick, shiny surface. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but the slick, shiny surface here versus this is sort of a dull matte finish, I would call it now. All ready to go with our seaside. Thanks for choosing that color, guys. You're awesome. Lovely, beautiful color here. I'm using our Stalmeister brush. This is number 20. It's a nice wide brush for nice flat surfaces. But look at that exceptional coverage there. Just beautiful. And these Stalmeister brushes are almost self-cleaning if you haven't tried them. I use these and the Klingon brushes and both excellent for self-cleaning. What does that mean? It means you suspend the brush in something like this. And these, these tubs come with a lid that's got a hole in it, which I don't have here right now, it's somewhere else. But you just suspend the brush up to about here. So this is the ferrule. So you want to suspend your brush up to about here in the water. It washes or rinses, rinse it out first is what I would do if I've got paint on my brush. Rinse it out just slightly, then sit your brush just above and in the water and all the paint literally drops away from the brush within about an hour or so. And then I just rinse out the water again, put them in for another hour and until it comes out clean. Look at that. Now, obviously when you're painting, a lot of you may already know this, but the color won't be a true, true color until you've let it dry. So some of the colors, the pigments actually look a little bit darker. We could talk about all sorts of things we're learning today. So the angle of your brush, so 45 degree angle is usually what I learn, what I do. It, it sometimes is even easier to lay a piece on its side. Does anyone do that? Lay a piece on its side and so then you're going like this instead of up and down like I'm trying to do here. But we're live people and we've got to do these things. So, um, but there's a tip right there. So see how the angle is about a 45 degree angle and we're laying the paint on. We're not pushing it on because if I'm pushing, I'm squishing and I'm actually creating more brush strokes and more lines. And a lot of these Little tips I learnt from the pros, Jenny Lynn and Laurie themselves, the wonderful owners of Fusion Mineral Paint. And I want to thank them so much for letting me do a live here today, just for you. So who's liking that colour so far? Are we happy we've chosen Seaside? Is that what we did? Seaside, yes. Amber, any more questions over there? Yeah, now so Kim this. wants to know, can you use Ultra Grip on laminate? Yes, you can. So melamine or laminate, um, like this little, this is a lemon. Is this laminate? I'm asking Marty, my camera guy, my husband, and he's got a thumbs up. Yes, that's laminate. I'm just pretty sure it was. I think maybe in the States, melamine and laminate are kind of the same thing. I don't know. I don't know. Anything that's slippery or shiny surfaces, glossy. Wow. And okay. can it be applied with a sponge? Yes, you can apply it with a sponge. And you may get a even smoother surface with that. So here I am, I've got to do my little bits in here. Now I could probably switch brushes for this, but I'm just gonna have a go with this. <clears throat> so if there's any, any more questions, please pop them in the comments. And either I'll answer them now, or Laurie or Jenny Lynn will get back and all some of the awesome moderators, admins here on the pro, I mean, on the Paint It Beautiful group will answer your lovely questions. That's just got such great coverage. I mean, I can't see any wood there. Usually, I, I just can't heal myself. I'll go over a second coat once this is completely dried. Um, and the other key is don't keep going over and over once you've painted let it go. So this part that I painted first here is probably starting to dry already. So I don't want to go over that again. Hopefully you're seeing all of that. I've got right in the grooves there. So you can imagine when this is all dried uh, and I'll have to have to do a blog post about this one now because when that's all dried I'm really tempted to put some kind of glaze in here. So if you mix a clear glaze with say a dark ash or black even how great that would look and really show up all those nice details. Or a metallic, suggest some colors that I could do 
the glaze there, people. That'd be great. Help with my decisions. <laughs> but I'll obviously have to do that another day. But right here, after we've finished our live, I'd love for you to join me over on my I Restore Stuff page. And I'll be painting over there as well and finishing off this piece on my page. And I want to encourage all of my viewers to jump over here on Paint It Beautiful and enter that competition. Because if you weren't here earlier, I mentioned something really awesome coming up tomorrow. So please stay tuned. You will want to want to listen or take a note of the competition. It's one of Paint It Beautiful's biggest giveaways to date. And tomorrow, Jenny Lynn will be putting a post up of what the prize is and how to enter. But you'll be wanting to do some beautiful pieces. And I'm going to continue with this now. Is there any more questions, Amber, before we go? Yeah, what type of brush is best for the ornate section? Oh, that ornate section. You can use some of the... There's actually a pointed um, bristle brush. That would have been great for getting into some of those ornate details. So you can see that there. They come in a few different sizes, so check with your Fusion retailers because they will um, have a lot of those different sizes in stock. Amber, if you wouldn't mind also, we're going to put in the comments, if you want to know where you can buy Fusion, where you can buy Ultra Grip, any of the products, the Stalinista brushes, we'll pop that where to buy link in the comments there and you can find your nearest Fusion retailer. We have Fusion retailers all over the world, in the UK, Europe, um, right here in Australia and so I'm going to continue this in about five minutes or so when I get a bit more organized over on my I Restore Stuff page so if you want to jump over there you can finish watching me paint and blab on a bit more about Ultra Grip and what we've been learning here in Paint It Beautiful group so thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you here tomorrow for that giveaway entry and um, thanks so much for joining me I'm Sharon from I Restore Stuff. Thanks for watching here on Paint It Beautiful. Bye.